Hi there, Oleg is here with another episode of TypeScript Fundamental Series Introducing Interfaces. Today we will see how to use interfaces with object annotations, indexable types, implementing classes, and function typing. If you are doing vanilla JavaScript till now, concept of interfaces should be something completely new for you. So what is interface? Interface is so-called syntactical contract that entity, in our case object of some type, should conform to. Obviously, to understand this better, we're gonna have to look into some real-world example, which we're gonna do just in a minute using our Rainbow application. As usually, you can find the source code of this project at oleconnex slash rainbow, and today's lesson will be in the branch named interfaces. Till now, we have seen several ways of annotating our values, such as built-in types like string and number, string literal types, type aliases, and union types. But this list is not complete without interfaces, because interfaces can be used for describing data structures and objects of pretty much any complexity. As we know, TypeScript type checking relies a lot on the shape that value has. It is often called duck typing or structural subtyping, which means that we are checking the structure of data, structure of the object. In context of Rainbow application, let's see how interface can be used for describing an object. It is considered a good practice to keep number of function parameters to a minimum. In order to achieve this, we will refactor mutate element function and instead of passing three separate parameters, we will pass one config object, which will contain all of those three values. So we will replace all those parameters in our mutate element function. We'll cut them out and keep them as a reference for later. So we will call our parameter now in options. Right now options have type of any and it's definitely not what we want to have in TypeScript since any does not give us any type protection. But at the beginning let's at least make our code working. So we will change references inside the function. For element ID we will put options.elid. For style name the same thing, options.style. And for the interval of our set interval function we will do options.int. At the place where we call our function of course we have to change the input also. So the first key of this options object will be ELID, which stands for element ID. Next one is style. And the last one is int, which stands for interval. We'll remove this, this comment since we don't need it anymore. So options still have the type of any, but at least our code should be working. So let's go to our application in the browser and let's see if it is working. So on refresh it looks okay. Let's go and see if there are any errors. We see no errors and that means everything is working. So we are back in our application. So what can we do at the beginning is to annotate our options parameters right in line and we will use that reference that we had before stating that element ID should be a string. Style as we remember is our type alias right here which combines both string literal types, border color and background color and interval should be a number. This is of course much better approach since now we cannot pass the wrong values in here. If for some reason element ID becomes a number, our editor will start complaining that argument of this type is not assignable to this function. But to be honest, this annotation looks pretty ugly. In case we have more than three, let's say five or seven function arguments, this line would become really long and it will be really hard to read this and to understand what kind of inputs 
should go into this function. Another downside of this sort of annotation is it cannot be reused for describing other values. If we want to reuse this type annotation, we're going to have to type the whole thing again. And this is where the interface keyword is coming for our rescue. Let's see how we can use it. So TypeScript provides us this special keyword interface. We will give it a name, starting with capital I, standing for interface. This is completely optional and you can decide yourself whatever naming convention you want to use. Our name will be I mutate element. And we will attach this whole annotation right here. As you would expect, now we can use it instead of that whole string. And again, it can be exported if we want and reused in other places. Just like with types, interface is just compile time construct, which means if we save this file, our app.js will be regenerated. When we come to our JavaScript file, we don't see any signs of the interface. It does not get converted to uh, any function or object. And of course, it is a great benefit since the footprint of our JavaScript is not growing. Let's see if our type checking is still working. We will replace one of our options here with bad input. And we can see right away that this statement is getting highlighted, telling us that argument of this type is not assignable to parameter of type i mutate element. Cool. So this approach is working. Let's see a few interesting details about interface syntax. It is pretty forgiving. If you look at it this way, it reminds you about object literal syntax, but we can get rid of those commas and it's still gonna work fine. No errors. We can use semicolons also. I personally prefer commas, but you can use whatever you want. We can, of course, add a method to an interface. Let's say in case our function is taking a callback. And since it is a function, we will put what kind of input it takes. Let's say it takes error and we will specify the return type, which may be void in our case. Yeah, we will not keep it since our function is not taking callback, but it is possible in case you need it. Even though we have not covered classes yet, I still want to show you how interfaces can be used for extending classes and for describing indexable types. To see this, let's use a simple example. We will create interface called iBook. We'll have a few properties such as author, a string, name, and identification number. Now let's create the actual class called book. Now we can use this keyword implements in the name of interface. Our class with will have constructor, but right now our class does not have all those three properties that we specified in the interface. That's why we see this error right here, saying that class book incorrectly implements interface iBook and some properties are missing. So let's quickly add those property definitions. We don't need commas. Now everything looks fine, but to go a little further, let's actually put those three values in our constructor. So, so they actually get assigned to this context of the object created by this class. Of course, if we have a book, we will have a library. So now we will create another interface. And this interface will be for describing indexable type. In our case, library, our library will be a simple object with keys and values. So we will try to describe it with another interface with the name iLibrary.
And this is the syntax for describing key value pairs. We'll say that our index will be a string. And what is important, we specify the value of this index, which is iBook. Perfect. So what we got so far is interface of a book, the actual implementation of book class, and interface for a library. Now we'll create variable name lib, standing for library, and it will have type annotation made with the interface that we just created for iLibrary. And for now it's going to be just an empty object literal. Now we will go ahead and add a few elements to our library. Let me copy paste it in order to save the time. So we are having some problem and of course I have misspelled the word constructor. Okay, now it is good. So what we have, we are assigning a property with this hash name. Then we assign the new object created with book class, which has those three parameters that we expect, string, string, and a number. So we don't see any errors here, but let's say if we change the assignment to something that is not a book, but let's say some random object will replace this value. Now we see that it is complaining, telling us that it is not of a type iBook. And we will change the key name so we don't have duplicated keys, in case that can cause some other problems. Also, if we assign value from the library to some other variable, let's say checked out book, we will assign this variable. It will give us a hint right away that it is of a type iBook. So this is an example how class can implement interface and how we can describe indexable types using interface. Cool. We'll clean up all this example code since, it, since we don't actually need it for our application, of course. And lastly, we will see how we can use interfaces for function type annotations. We'll of course start with the interface keyword and let's say we are defining the iSearch function and we know that this function will to inputs named source which is a string and some substring that we'll be looking for and we will return true or false as an output of our function. Function typing with interfaces only works with function expressions, which means we will assign our function to a variable name. So we'll create a variable search func and we will say that it's going to be of a type I search. Now we can assign the actual function. So we can see right now it is saying that this function is returning void while we are expecting it to return boolean. So let's fix it. Let's put a source in here, source and substring. Inside we're gonna have some sort of re result and we will search for substring in our source string. Now we will return boolean value. We will be checking if result is more than minus one, which is index where our substring might be found. Perfect. So now our function is taken to expected parameters and returning a boolean. So this is a way how to use interface for describing a function expression. At the end, let's again clean everything. We will save our file. Let's double check that everything looks fine and let's see if our application is working okay. Let me refresh the page. Perfect. We don't have any errors and the application is still working. Now we have implementation with interface. Let's quickly go over the stuff that we have learned today. We have seen what interfaces are. 
how we can use them for object annotation, for indexable types, and for implementing classes. Also, we've been using interfaces to describe function types. Please subscribe and share this video if you like it.